hello friends and happy autumn we all know the famous joe fox line from you've got mail when he says something along the lines of don't you love new york in the fall it makes me think of school supplies don't you love new york in the fall it makes me want to buy school supplies i would send you a bouquet of newly sharpened pencils if i knew your name and address and while I would never turn down a bouquet of freshly sharpened pencils, but what about a bundle of fresh, not fresh, new books from the bookstore? They still have that bookstore smell to them. I just love this season. Everything is starting to feel so cozy. So I am ready to share a bunch of book recommendations for any of you autumn enthusiasts, anybody looking to read a book that will make you feel like it is fall, as well as going over my fall reading list, all of the books that are on my radar that I cannot wait to jump into. So let's get started. I figured it would be fun to have categories to recommend the books in. So this first category is cemetery picnic reads. If you have been around here, if you know me at all, you know I love cemeteries. I love walking through cemeteries. I love picnicking in cemeteries as the Victorians did. Before we jump into the cemetery picnic reads category, I am so excited. You guys have no idea. I'm so excited to share that Audible is partnering with me on this video. So I want to chat to you more about them and one of the audiobooks that fits into the cemetery picnic reads category. I have been the biggest Audible fangirly for years. Audible is the place that I always go to for my audiobooks. The first audiobook I ever listened to was on Audible and I now have over I think 300 titles in my Audible library. Audible is the leader in audio content and for good reason. You can discover anything your imagination desires. They have anything you could possibly be looking for from gothic romance or stories that will surprise you or thrill you or inspire you. Stories that will pull on your heartstrings in ways that will change you as a person and stories that will feel like a hug in a time when you might need it most. I just love stories you guys and I love that audiobooks provide a story in a way that really brings it more to life for me. I also love how the audiobooks and browsing through the audiobooks is so easy to access right there in the app. You can look through genres that you know and love. You can explore bestsellers, new releases. I listened to the audiobook of Morbidly Yours by Ivy Fairbanks and wow, it was incredible. It was so good. It had a couple tropes that I didn't love, but for the most part, I ate it up like it was trick-or-treat candy on Halloween. I couldn't get enough of it. Our female main character is from Texas and she has a Southern accent. And our main male character is from Ireland and of course has an Irish accent. And the narrators who are narrating the audiobooks have those accents and it just really brought it to life for me. So let me tell you more about Morbidly Yours. Oh, did I mention I'm parked outside a cemetery right now? I should have said that in the beginning. I was listening as I walked around. I love to really immerse myself. So we have Callum and his funeral home. And not only does he run the funeral home, but he also owns the cemetery. Terry. He's very socially awkward. Like somebody will come in and talk to him and he's like, do I smile? Should I shake their hand? Like what? I, I don't know. What does, what, what should I do? <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> and in next door moves Lark and she's from Texas. She is bubbly and outgoing and she's like a positive ray of sunshine. But Lark came to Ireland because she is looking for a fresh start after losing her husband. And Callum is from a long line of generations that have owned this funeral home. He is set to inherit it, but with only one stipulation. He must get married by the time he is 35 years old or he will lose it all forever. So Lark, grieving for her husband and not really interested in dating, comes up kind of with like this project slash plan to help Callum meet girls and know how to better communicate and feel comfortable. Callum is just so awkward and I find him so endearing. And while Lark is getting to know him and help him try to find a wife, she starts to feel the cracks on her heart start to mend slowly. The audiobook explores grief in I think a really raw and realistic way. I think it was really beautifully done, but it's also laugh out loud funny and heartwarming. It has a little bit of spice. It is the perfect spooky romantic comedy audiobook. I mean, it's not really spooky, but it's perfect for spooky season. I really truly just cannot recommend Audible enough. Thank you again so much to Audible for sponsoring this video. This really has been 
a dream sponsorship for me. I have loved Audible for so long and I hope you guys will love it as much as I do. All right, back to the recommendations. All right, let's move on to the other books in the Cemetery Picnic Reads category. This one is for fans of more of a Regency setting, but also the vibe kind of makes me think of the Bronte sisters. The atmosphere is very misty and foggy. There are estates and manor houses and balls, but also like blood and phantoms. That is The Monstrous Kind by Lydia Gregovic. This is a bit of a slow book. I was actually pretty hooked and interested at the beginning, but then it kind of fell a little flat for me through the middle, but then it does pick up and there are twists and there are turns. Our main character is Merrick Darling and she lives a nightmarish life, quite literally. Unlike the commoners, she is immune to this toxic fog that covers the English countryside. There are these creatures that stalk the borders and they're called phantoms, but I kind of picture them as like these walking skeletons. And in her province, they have these fires that burn along the borders to keep them out, but the fires are growing dim and more and more of these phantoms are slipping past the borders. Merrick's sister ends up going missing and her father has recently passed away. So it is up to her to solve this mystery of how these phantoms are making it past the borders is somebody letting them in is there something else going on it's a very like eerie twist on what feels like an Austin book like Northanger Abbey I'm not saying it's at all like the story of Northanger Abbey but the vibes. And lastly, in our cemetery picnics category, I don't know if I've ever recommended this before, but I should have recommended it. If I haven't, I am apologizing to you now because this is one of my favorite books. This is The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy by Megan Bannon. Oh my gosh, does this book have everything? Let me see if I can convince you. This is like if Nora Ephron wrote a Western, but make it paranormal. Add in a little dash of fantasy. If you like, you've got mail. They see each other often in real life, but then they'll go home and communicate to each other and they don't know who they're talking to. But then in real life, they kind of hate each other. Hart is a marshal whose job is to patrol the lands. And whenever he gets these dead bodies, he takes them to Mercy, who works at Birdsell and Son Undertakers. One evening, Hart is just, he's out a long day and he's tired and he's lonely. And he decides to pick up a pen and write a letter to a friend. And to his surprise, the next day he gets a response. And this friendship is born. This is more than just a fluffy romance, but it also is so funny and so cute and so heartwarming. And it goes deep. I cried. Come for the banter, come for the chemistry. Mm, it's so good. Please read it. Our next category is candlelight seance stories. And you can thank Jared for that. He came up with that category as I was trying to come up with category ideas. These are great to add to your October TBR. Drop whatever you're currently reading or okay, finish what you're currently reading. But next, I recommend that you start Phantasma by Kaylee Smith. I know I said maybe wait for October for these, but this is one of my favorite fall books of the year. If you're in a reading slump and you need something that is going to catch your attention from page one, that is this book. Throughout the past few days, I'm only halfway through, so I can't completely vouch for the ending, but this has been so unputdownable. I have been listening to the audiobook while I'm in the shower. I have been reading while I eat all of my meals, listening to it in the car whenever I drive anywhere. And I've even been staying up till 3 a.m. reading it because I can't put it down. It is set in New Orleans, but it is historical I don't actually know the time period, but we're wearing corsets and dresses. Rooms are candlelit in the evening. There's carriages. Vampires exist. Ghosts exist. Demons exist. And our main character is a necromancer. She ends up entering this competition called Phantasma because she's looking for her sister. Her mom recently passed away and some bank officers showed up at their house one morning, letting them know that they're actually bankrupt. Someone in their family had taken out a loan and they owed that money back or else they were going to lose their beautiful mansion that they live in where they carry out their business of being necromancers. So she thinks her sister has entered Phantasma because at the end you get, I think, a wish. Anything they want in the world, essentially, they get one wish. And this is a deathly game. Most people die. But on the night before this Phantasma game begins, she meets a phantom named Blackwell and he ends up kind of being like, like her Haymitch in the Hunger Games. He's helping her through the stages because they make a bargain. He wants something from her and in return, he will help her make it to the end and see if she can find her sister there. If you need a book to get you out of a slump, this one. If you need a book to put you in the mood for Halloween, especially this one. I just had to insert myself here to say, 
that this book is incredibly spicy, kind of like Allie Hazelwood or Tessa Bailey, but I loved this book despite that. I just skipped those scenes. Usually I don't, but after the third one, I was like, okay. If you like spicy books, you'll love this one. If you don't like spicy books, read it anyway, but just skip those scenes. They don't talk about anything important in them, so you can skip them. The next book in the Candlelight Seance Stories category is one that I just recently finished. I gave it five stars. It is very dark. It feels like a dark, eerie fairy tale, but also has the setting that to me feels like Regency England. And that is A Sorceress Comes to Call by T. Kingfisher. This is such an incredible story. It's about a girl named Cordelia. She is so sweet, but also so timid and naive. And she hasn't experienced much in life, but she has enough experience to know that her mother is very unusual. Their house like doesn't have doors. She's not allowed to have her own privacy and lock any doors. She doesn't allow Cordelia to have any friends. She kind of reminds me of Rapunzel's mom, how she tries to keep her locked away. Same thing. Cordelia's only friend is their family horse named Falada. Her mother unexpectedly decides to move them into a manor home of the squire in order to make him fall in love with her so that they can inherit all of his money and be rich. But the squire's very keen, very intelligent sister knows that something is off. And I think it's so funny because she calls Cordelia's mom Doom. She says, oh, Doom has arrived on our doorstep today. She knows that something is wrong. And Cordelia knows that these kind and lovely people are going to be her mother's next victims. Cordelia starts to feel at home for the very first time in her life. And she has to decide how to face the woman who raised her to save the people that now make her feel like family. It gets dark and quite creepy at the end of this book. I had to go in and tell Jared and be like, Babe, this just happened just so it was out of my head and kind of like now we were sharing the trauma of what I had just read, but it was so good at the same time. I will be reading this book again in the future because I just think it's so perfect for a dark autumn read. This next book I have recommended before, but it was a few years ago, so I figured it was okay to recommend it again, and that is The Diviners by Libba Bray. It follows Evie, who just recently arrived in New York City, and she's living with her uncle, and he has this, some might say, unhealthy obsession with the occult, and I think if my memory serves correctly, he works at this museum for strange and peculiar things. But while she's spending time and getting to know her uncle, she's worried that he might discover this dark secret she has that has really only caused her trouble so far in life. While she's exploring and getting to know the city, she realizes that there is a serial killer on the loose. Her dark and a secret power might just help the police catch this killer. So Evie jumps headstrong into this dance with a murderer. We get to know some side characters, one of which is stuck between this world and another. And it's just perfect for that 1920s fall in New York mystery, solving a murder, like a whodunit, but also there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. I don't wanna to give too much away. I think this is a great book to go into blind. Highly recommend. And lastly, for our Candlelight Seance books, this is my favorite witchy book of all time after The Discovery of Witches, which is my number one. I read this book last year. It's one of the most unique things I've ever read. This is Slewfoot by Brom, A Tale of Bewitchery. I am not a horror reader very much, very often. It's not usually my thing. I dabble in it a little bit. If you like witch books that are set during like the same time as the Salem witch trials, I think you would love this. This is very much a <laughs> I support women's wrongs book in the most satisfying way. So it's set in colonial New England. It's a tale of magic and mystery and terror and revenge. It's a story about a woman named Abitha who is recently widowed, which is really sad because her husband was fantastic. He was, he was really like a green flag guy. And now she's left with her husband's brother who basically says, oh, you were married to my husband and now you have this farm and this land. You belong to me now. I own you and you need to pay off your debt on this farm. You need to come work for me. But she is not okay with this and for good reason. Abitha is forced to look for help and that is where she gets the help of Slewfoot, an ancient spirit that awakes in the dark wood. The wild folk call him father, slayer, and protector. 
but that's not what the people call him. Together they ignite in this battle between pagan and puritan. It's so like lusciously dark folk horror. I am a very soft-hearted girly. I don't do intense horror well and I loved this. This is a six out of five star read for me. So I'll just leave that there. The category for these next books, I'm calling it the fall foliage walk into the town pumpkin patch category. These are books that are basically exploding from the pages with pumpkin spice lattes and fall leaves and all things just cozy and autumnal. I've shown this book on my channel before, but I don't think I've ever reviewed it or recommended it. And that is Murder at the Pumpkin Pageant by Darcy Hanna. Out of all of the fall cozy mysteries I've read, this is in my top three. This was so good. It doesn't follow quite the typical storyline that a lot of cozy mysteries do. I think it's a little bit more unique. It follows our main character, Lindsay, who works in the lighthouse, but she's not a lighthouse keeper. She has turned the lighthouse into a bakery and they bake up all of the autumnal sweets you could possibly imagine. I got so hungry while reading this book. And this lighthouse is known to have a resident ghost. Everyone knows that this lighthouse is haunted. So as Halloween is approaching, she ends up letting her friend, who is also an influencer and podcaster, host this live ghost hunt investigation at the lighthouse. And her friend is no amateur. She brings in a professional ghost hunting team, but Lindsay is a little bit protective of her ghost and she's worried about what they might uncover. Throughout the night, the segment is pretty uneventful until things take a terrifying turn. I did not see the ending coming. It was so good, very cozy. It's not that spooky. Every page just screams fall. I did just recommend this book in my autumn starter pack. So if you've already seen that video, I apologize. You have to see me talk about this again, but I couldn't not include this in this category because it's it's too perfect. I had to. It, it made me. It forced my hand. <laughs> and that book is a dark Dark and Secret Magic by Wallace Kinney. This book is like a mashup of all of your favorite Halloween movies. There's a jack-o'-lantern carving contest. There's decorating a big manor for Halloween. There's an apothecary. And our main character loves to knit and crochet. She loves living in her cozy little cottage with her cat. There's so much autumnal goodness in this book. As well as our main character, Kate, who is a hedge witch. She prefers a soft and slow life but as she is preparing for her town's Halloween party, she discovers an old book that belonged to her mom with some dark secrets in it. Her mom was never into dark magic or anything like that, so she's confused as to why her mom owns this, which sends Kate to kind of solve this mystery of where this book came from. I think if you like practical magic or Hocus Pocus specifically, you would love this book. It also feels like very Gilmore Girls-y. I just had to include this because truly every page, I was highlighting all these passages that feel like fall. Here is an example. Every storefront has finalized their Halloween displays with pumpkins, witches, and ghosts crowding the sidewalks. Zoomies, the local coffee shop, has a chalkboard sign advertising their pumpkin spice and caramel cloud lattes. Groups of people walk with strollers up and down the sidewalks, chatting with each other as their children babble nonsense to themselves. One infant, already dressed in costume as a tiny little pumpkin, naps under a soft blanket in her bassinet. This book isn't out yet, but it does come out, I think, October 8th. The last book I have in this category is Pumpkin Spice and Poltergeist. This book was just so cute and I was hooked from the very beginning. I actually haven't finished. I'm reading it with my patrons this month. This feels like Halloween Town, meaning in this town you can find vampires, werewolves, ghouls. Also mixed with Stars Hollow because it's very, very cozy. Everybody knows each other. And the name of the town where the story is set is called Maple Hollow, which I think is so cute. We follow our main character, Jordan, who accidentally conjures the ghost of her ex-girlfriend. And now this ghost is determined to haunt her until she finds someone new. But then we have Harlow, who is the new girl in town. All she wants is a job at her sister's cafe, but she discovers that the spooky town of Maple Hollow is more than just a gimmick, that real magic is alive here. After one too many run-ins with vampires and ghouls, she is ready to jump on her broomstick and fly out of Maple Hollow forever, until she finds herself falling under the spell of our girl Jordan. It is a sapphic, paranormal cozy romance. It really is so cozy. It's so good, so sweet, a little bit spicy, not too much. You can easily skip those chapters. Again, I haven't finished it yet, so I can't speak to it completely, 
but I'm loving what I've read so far. I apologize if it looks different. We've got some clouds rolling in and it just got quite dark outside, which is actually fitting for this next category, our studying in an Oxford library category. If it wasn't obvious, these are dark academia books. I've talked about this one before, but it's like Gilmore Girls. I, I will never stop recommending it ever. This has recently been added to my favorite books of all time list, which that list has three classics on it currently. So this is the only non-classic book. Although I would consider this a classic, but okay, I'm gonna stop rambling. This is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. My favorite witch book of all time, my favorite dark academia book, Everything about this book is perfect. I wouldn't change anything. I think it was two years ago I read this book for the first time and I can reread this book time and time again and I enjoy it more every time. This is a story of the Bodleian Library and witches and vampires and love, castles, mystery, political intrigue. It has everything. It follows Diana Bishop, who is a young scholar at Oxford, she just wants to focus on her academic life. But that is until fate had other plans for Diana. When she's in the library one day, she pulls out a book and something mysterious happens to her and also to the book. And that is when she meets Matthew Claremont, a vampire, a very powerful vampire. This book that she pulled out in the library is actually the key to a mystery that his family has been trying to solve for centuries. But now she is the only one in possession of it. And now witches want it, the vampires want it, and they both want it for power. They both want it to be able to control the witches or the witches control the vampires. But because Diana doesn't know much about this book, and Matthew does, they kind of team up to learn about the mystery of this book. And as they do so, they maybe fall in love and it's maybe the best romance ever, ever. If you've considered picking this up, if you've thought about it, if you've had it on your TBR, this is your sign. I am your sign right now telling you to pick this up this fall. Next, I have It Girl by Ruth Ware. This is a thriller. So if you love a good autumnal thriller, sometimes it's hard to find good ones, but this one is set at Oxford when students are going back to school. So it's like end of summer, beginning of fall. And I'm not going to tell you too much about this because I truly believe that this book is best read if you go in blind, not knowing the synopsis first. Just know that the vibes are kind of like Gossip Girl. That's why it's called It Girl. There's this It Girl. And of course there's a murder. I've heard Ruth Ware compared to being a modern Agatha Christie. Some of her books, I don't love, but then some of them I really do love, and this was a five out of five star read for me. So if you want a really good who done it, a book that is unput downable, I read this I think in 24 hours. I couldn't stop, and the ending I was my mind was blown. I think my jaw was on the floor. Jared came out and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, no, <laughs> what's gonna happen? Like, I love a good book that takes me on a roller coaster of a ride and I don't know where the story's going, but also I'm not necessarily the smartest and I don't usually predict endings of thrillers. So if you're a really intelligent person and you predict the ending of this, it might not hit the same for you. But if you're not always good at predicting endings and you want a good dark academia thriller to read during fall, hi recommend this one. And lastly, in the studying in an Oxford library category, I have A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This follows Effie, and I relate to her so much. I love her as a character. She believes in fairy tales. Her whole life, she's believed in fairy tales, and specifically this fairy king that is a character in her favorite book that she knows backwards, forwards, she can quote any line from it. She is a first year student at this prestigious architecture college. She wants to be a writer, but they don't allow women into the literary college, which is ridiculous. She spends her days in class, but in the evening she spends her time reading through the tattered copy of this favorite book about this fairy king. But then one day the family of her favorite author who wrote this book announces a contest to redesign his estate that he wrote the book in. And Effie feels like this is destiny. She's an architectural student, so this is perfect. And now she gets to go learn more about her favorite author if she wins it's not a spoiler, but she does win the competition and she gets taken to this estate and it is, when I say it is moody, it is gothic. It is set on a cliff by the sea and on the drive up in the carriage, I think they're in a carriage or are they in a car? Oh my gosh, I don't remember. Now I want to say they were in a car. <laughs> she sees maybe these apparitions, these ghosts or these beings 
running out in the woods. She doesn't know if they're real or if it's just her imagination. And there she meets Preston Hillary, who is another student. If I remember, he's writing a piece about this project. And these two rival students end up kind of investigating further into this author's life and discover that this house might not be what they think it is and what they know about him might be false. And if so, what's really going on and why were they really invited there? It is so hauntingly beautiful. This book at its heart, I think is a love letter to stories and it is the perfect book to read during the fall if you're a reader. I can't describe it better than that. I just want everybody else to have the opportunity to love it. The audiobook for this one is also really good. So because these clouds coming in are making it so dark in here, I am going to go cozy up, do some reading, and I will be back in the morning with my fall reading list and to share with you the ambitious amount of books that I want to read this fall. So perfect time for bathroom break. I will see you again in just a second. Good morning. I've got some tea. Jared has brought me a dope. Ooh, a donut from our favorite bakery on a very nice autumnal plate. It's gonna fall if I try to show you. I've got my laptop, which has my fall reading list on it. So let's just jump in. I have a lot. So let's do this kind of like as a rapid fire list because there are, there are a lot. And I apologize, I just have the name of the title written down. I'm just going off of a list that I have in my notes and I just wrote down the title, not the authors, but I'll put a picture here so you can see who the book is by. The first one on my list is This Cursed House. The only reason I added this to my list is because the cover looks really spooky. I love books about haunted houses and from what I know, I think it's historical. Next, I have So Thirsty by Rachel Harrison. Rachel Harrison has been a hit or miss author for me. I loved Cackle. That's one of my favorite autumnal books, but then I did not love Such Sharp Teeth. So I'm gonna go into this one with low expectations. I've heard that So Thirsty is quite gory and that the horror is turned up a notch compared to Rachel Harrison's previous books. I'm gonna go in with low expectations. And then we have Lucy Undying. I am so excited for this one because because I love The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein, which is another book by the same author. Lucy Undying is a vampire novel. It says it's a seductive gothic fantasy. A vampire escapes the thralls of Dracula and embarks on her own search for self-discovery and true love. I'm gonna try to just not have high expectations for any books this fall and then I hope that I just end up loving a bunch of them because when I go in thinking, wow, I'm really gonna love this, it has all these things somehow, I'm usually let down a little bit. Anyway, the next book, I have on my list is Immortal Dark, which is a vampire story and that's all I know, but I love this cover. I feel like it's so detailed. Okay, I'll look up just briefly the synopsis. It says it's a dark academia fantasy with vampires, perfect for fans of Ninth House and lovers of all things vampires. Okay, I love Ninth House and I love vampires. Then we have My Vampire Plus One, which I read, I think it's called my roommate the vampire or my vampire roommate last year and it was just such a good fun kicking my feet giggling wholesome vampire reading experience it was so funny and cute so i will definitely be reading the second one i don't know anything about it but i know i like the first one so i'm going to read this one and i don't want to know anymore next i have given our history which just seems like a very sweet academia back to school but these are two university professors that I think had a thing between them when they were younger and now they're both at the same university and they rekindle this romance. Also know that you get time jumps so you go back in time to see how their relationship began and I think that was during a summer camp. So I don't know if the whole book is going to be set during fall. I assume not because of that, but we'll see. Next, I have A Dark and Drowning Tide by Alison Saft. I love pretty much everything Alison Saft writes. My favorite book by her is A Far Wilder Magic, which if you have not read during fall it is one of the most perfect books to read during this season but i think i'm going to save a dark and drowning tide for november because i always struggle with fall books to read in november i don't jump straight into christmas books after halloween i actually think november is peak dark academia month a sharp-tongued 
folklorist must pair up with her academic rival to solve their mentor's murder in this lush and enthralling sapphic fantasy romance. Sign me up. Folklorist, academic rivalry, they're solving a murder. Yes, please. And then I have The Cottage Around the Corner. I just recently started listening to A Cottage Around the Corner and it is so cute. It feels very much like Gilmore Girls so far. It's about a witch who owns a shop and a rival like mage moves in and I don't know much more, but I know the writing, it feels very like small town. The first chapter, she was talking about how her and her family had a movie night and they watched, what was it? I don't remember, but how they had like wine and popcorn and that made me think of Lorelai and Rory and their movie nights. And then I have an Academy for Liars. I have given every book by this author, five stars. Okay, let's read the synopsis together even though I don't wanna to know too much about it. it. Says, Lennon Carter's life is falling apart. Then she gets a mysterious phone call inviting her to take the entrance exam for Drayton College, a school of magic hidden in the secret pocket of Savannah. Lennon has been chosen because, like everyone else at the school, she has an innate gift of persuasion, the ability to wield her will like a weapon, using it to control others and in rare cases, matter itself. Okay, I'm not gonna read anymore because I don't wanna know anymore. Next we have Impractical Magic. I just saw this on Instagram and just thought the cover was so cute and and obviously it's a node to practical magic, which I love. So I don't know anything else about it, but I'll be picking this up. So it is available on Kindle October 1st and on audiobook. But if you want to get a paperback, the paperback says that it will come out May 1st. But I swear I saw on Instagram them saying that the paperback would be out October 1st. So I don't know, maybe keep your eye on it. I don't know if they put in the wrong dates. Okay, and then I have the Village Library Demon Hunting Society. This sounds so good. I love the UK cover. I think I'm going to order it from Waterstones because I prefer this cover to the US cover. It says a librarian with a knack for solving murders realizes there is something decidedly supernatural afoot in her little town in this cozy fantasy mystery. It's a lesson for demons and murderers are like never mess with a librarian. I've seen this one blurbed as being like Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Murder She Wrote. I just think that's gonna be so cute and so cozy. I also wanna read The Witch Would Not. I love this cover. It's by Olivia Atwater who wrote Half a Soul. And I think it's Victorian. I think it's gothic and spooky, but I don't know much else about it. And then I wanna read The Lamp Lighter. It's set in a 19th century whaling village on the coast in New England. And this place is infamous for people just disappearing into the mist. And then one night, a girl goes missing after these lamps go out. And I think the story is following someone who's gonna solve these mysteries of why these people are going missing. I don't know, but I think it's gonna be more in the horror realm. So it might be perfect for the end of October. Then I have Hollowed, which is a Sleepy Hollow retelling. I think it's also pretty heavy on the romance and pretty spooky. Don't know anything other than that, but it was on my list last year and I never got to it and the audiobook is finally out, so I think I'm gonna listen to this one. Okay, then I have Immortality, A Love Story. This is the second book after Anatomy, A Love Story, and I don't know why I never read this. I loved the first book so much. It's like grave robbing and a girl who wants to become a surgeon, but they didn't teach girls how to become surgeons back then, so she has to team up with this guy to bring her bodies, basically, so she can study on them, but there's twists and there's turns, and it's so gothic and incredible, and I don't know why I haven't read the second one yet. I know I'm gonna I love it. Then I have The Crimson Crown, which I've heard really good things about. I think it's a Snow White retelling, but from the villain's perspective, what is her name? The Evil Queen. And then also, I think this would be another great one for dark academia fans, is The Temptation of Magic. I got this recommendation from my friend Elizabeth. If you guys want great book recommendations, I highly recommend following Little Life of Books on Instagram. She is the best. She, like every book she recommends, I usually end up loving. And she recommended The Temptation of Magic. She gave it five stars. I'm just gonna read the first paragraph of the synopsis. Nicole Palmer has needed to study the supernatural art in the local Cornish manor for years. So it's set in Cornwall in England, which I love, encoded in its last message from her mother on how to stay safe from the wake, the organization that governs all supernaturals. As an Imperial, Nicole has the ability to hunt and kill dangerous creatures, making her invaluable. But if her power was ever triggered, they would find her, use her, and then kill her, like they did her mother. <gasps> so there's supernaturals, there's like an art college or university set in England. 
I'm so excited. It says it's for fans of Serpent and Dove and Discovery of Witches, which are two of my favorite books. I also really want to read The Briar Book of the Dead, but I've heard that this is one that you need to push through the first 30 to 40 percent, but then the rest of the book is really, really good. But the first 30 percent could put you in a slump because of how slow it is. But I'm okay with slow sometimes. It says that it is a beautifully told gothic fairy tale of ghosts witches, deadly secrets, and past sins. Perfect for fans of Hannah Witten or Ava Reed. I know that it's about a coven of witches, but this main witch gets put in the position of power, but she doesn't have the same power that the other witches have. She has to, I guess, learn how to find her power or get her power, but I think also she can see ghosts. And the setting of it is kind of like the village because these witches rule over this town, they protect it, but it's this tiny, tiny little village, kind of like in the movie, The Village. So I don't know, we'll see. I really love the cover of this one too. And then I have Salt and Broom, which is, get this, it's a Jane Eyre retelling, but it's witchy. I just want to preface, I don't specifically love witchcraft or witches, but I love fall. And for me growing up, witches always went hand in hand with fall. Hocus Pocus and Halloween Town was my childhood. I always wanted to be like Marnie and Marnie finds out that she's a witch. So that is why you might see a lot of witchy books on my list. I just associate them with fall. And some of my favorite books ever, Discovery of Witches and, um, the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches, they have witches in them. So I just have a good, what's the word, track record with enjoying books that are about witches. So it is a Jane Eyre retelling and I love the cover. I'm gonna redo the synopsis because it's really short. It says, trunks packed with potions and cures, Jane Eyre, A-I-R-E, sets out on a crisp, clear October morning to face the greatest challenge of her sheltered girls' school existence. A shadow lies over Thornfield Hall and its reclusive master, Edward Rochester, and he's hired her only as a last resort. Jane stumbles again and again as she tries to establish a rapport with her prickly new employer, but he becomes the least of her worries as a mysterious force seems to work against her. The threats mount around both Jane and Rochester, who is becoming more intriguing and appealing to her by the day. Jane begins to fear her herb healing and protective charms may not be enough to save the man she's growing to love from a threat darker and more dangerous than either of them imagined. People are saying there's zero spice in it, and that is a good retelling so i'm definitely gonna pick this one up in october especially since it's set during october I feel like it will be perfect i would also love to pick up the hacienda or the vampires of el norte the blurb says it's mexican gothic meets rebecca i did not love mexican gothic but i love rebecca it's set during the aftermath of the mexican war of independence in Mexico and there's vampires and there's romance. This has been on my list for a couple years. It's one of my sister's favorite books. So I just need to read it. I also have this poetry collection on my list. It's called Halloween Hearts. I love the vintage style to the cover. I love a good poetry book that I can just pick up and read a poem of during my breakfast. It says the poetry is inspired by Ray Bradbury and Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, I totally forgot. I also want to read Lady Macbeth by Ava Reed. It just recently came out. It's a retelling of Lady Macbeth, but very loose retelling. I just know it's going to be atmospheric. I hope it just has Ava Reed's classic very, how do I say, like she writes in such a human way with emotions and thoughts that I would have if I was the main character, but also in a very atmospheric and detailed way. Very excited. And then lastly, there is a cookbook coming out that I'm so excited to grab. It's by Nick Alcaraz. I follow him on Instagram, obsessed obsessed with everything he posts, has a cookbook coming out called Peculiar Baking and the detail that he put into this book. He makes these recipes, usually like desserts and cakes and pastries that are really spooky, perfect for Halloween parties. And I just know that he put so much love into this. I'm just a little bit sad because it comes out October 29th and I would love to get it like mid-October so that I have time to enjoy it during Halloween. But either way, I'll use it next Halloween. I'm super excited. So that is it for my autumn reading list. It's it's long, I know. When I don't finish this year, I can carry over to next year. Like I said, autumn is my favorite time for reading. So I just can't get enough books. I want to read all the time. And thanks to audiobooks, I can do that. There are too many stories life is too short so i have to get as many of them in as i can and audiobooks help me so much with that but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you for watching i can just imagine that this video is going to be quite long lastly if you have any fall book recommendations for me please put them down in the comments because i need all of them i write them all down 
and sometimes you guys give me the best recommendations. So yeah, if you think you know of a book that I will like, let me know about it. And yeah, I love you guys. I'm gonna finally eat my donut and finish my tea, which is now cold, but that's okay. Jared is just putting on some Saturday morning cartoons. I think we're gonna do Scooby-Doo this morning, but yeah, I love you guys and I wish you the happiest of autumns and I will see you very soon. Bye friends.